Hello again guys, got another interesting product to take a look at today. This is the R-Watch smartwatch. Without any further ado, let's just go ahead and open it up, take a look at it. This is not an Android Wear device. This is not an Apple Watch or anything, in case you're curious. This is a smartwatch. I believe it can connect to both iOS and Android. I'll be connecting it to an Android device. But inside of the box, you're gonna find a quality certificate, a user guide, a micro USB charging cable, about 18 inches long, and the smartwatch itself, which actually appears to have a screen protector pre-installed on it, because it says to peel off after applications completed. So we're gonna go ahead and peel that off. So let's go ahead and take a second. We'll get it powered up. We'll see what it looks like out of the box. And then I'll hook it up to a phone. But it looks like this is going to have to be charged before it can be powered up the first time, so let me go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. And we're back. It's a little while later. Actually, it's several days later, but that's okay. I've gone ahead and installed their application, set up my account and everything. You have to provide them with some sort of registration info. It says it works with email or phone number, but it only would take my phone number, so I gave them my Google voice number because that's kind of a throwaway. But here's what the app looks like by default. It says to bind your accessories, click here, all the little settings you would expect. Sports, sleep, heart rate, history, sync data, settings, and about. Let's look in settings very quickly. User information, there's stuff about me. And the first time you load it up, and until you click this little box, every time you bring it up, it's gonna say enable accessibility. So when you hit okay on that, it brings you in here to the accessibility menu. And once you're inside there, you can click on smartwatch and turn that on to actually enable the notifications to come through. But let's go ahead and get this bound up. So to power the watch on, hold the button. I have played around with this briefly. It does start up very, very quickly. And so here's your default UI. You've got your call button, you've got your messages button, battery status. And if you tap this little button down here at the bottom, it takes you into the actual menus. Right in the center, you've got Bluetooth, you've got call logs and messaging and camera controls and everything else. You can swipe to get to the next menu, next menu. I'm not gonna go through what every single one of these are, probably just touch on a few of them, but I would assume Bluetooth right here in the middle sets up Bluetooth. So let's go to Bluetooth settings. Power on, there you go. Visibility on, oh, and I do see smartwatch popped up. Interestingly enough, it popped up twice. One has a keyboard and one has just general Bluetooth. And I think in theory, we may be paired up. It's asking for access to messages. It does say done. So yeah, we'll give it access. Call on history. It's asking for access to basically everything, but that's okay. And suddenly this thing lit up like Christmas. As you can see, it did set the time correctly. So now I should be able to hit this little button and all the things in here should work at least somewhat. So let's see, call log. Yeah, there you can see where I've called my wife a couple of times. Uh, it's loading my contacts now. And there's contacts, messaging, inbox and outbox. It says not connected. Oh, it is connecting. And it pulled in all the things from where Cricket has been poking at me because I switched phones. For music, it, I don't have any music on this device yet, but it did pull the blue Vivo 5 for music and it is connected. Let's see what happens when I hit the button. Yeah, I don't have any music on here. It's not gonna be able to do anything. We do have a stopwatch and stopwatch appears to do stopwatch type things. There's a notifier, camera, rear camera and front camera. And of course, as soon as I hit that, it said disconnecting. Let's say front camera. Oh, it loaded up the front camera. Hello there. And you can sort of see what it's doing. That's very cool. Now, how, how would I capture? Oh, just tapped a button and it captured. So let's go back out of there. That's actually better than I've seen on like Android Wear. I know Android Wear can do it, just doesn't do it particularly well. Try the rear camera now. So there's our rear camera. Turn it to face me. And there you go. Now you can see me in there. It just took a snap of me. Over here, I see alarms. So you can set your ringtone for alarms. That's vibration by default and it's vibrating. Oh, and you can set it to ring. Okay, so that you can change the way the notifications come through. You have a pedometer, step setting, weight setting, a compass. If you, in case you wanna have a compass, you can do this to calibrate it. Yeah, it doesn't seem to wanna calibrate. I'm not concerned. There's a find my phone button. I'm here. <laughs> All right. I'm here. So your phone will start yelling for you. You have a sedentary reminder that will tell you every 20 minutes if you've been sedentary. You got your heart rate, which actually I did test this briefly earlier. Now I'm gonna press it kind of firmly against me just to make sure everything's working. There's 59 beats per minute. And of course it decided to go to sleep during that time. 59, 57, 56. And my heart rate's not generally terribly fast. That may be, yeah, that's a little bit slow. Just feeling my pulse. No, it sped up suddenly. It says 80 to 82. That, that actually seems to be pretty close. Now this is an interesting one. This looks like a remote control of some form. So you've got television, other and reset. Let's hit television, set unfinished, first set. So yeah, not sure how that's gonna work or if that's gonna work. It is a neat option to have because it does have a little IR blaster here on the side. You have an LCD backlight and how long you wanna leave it on for. There's a calculator in case you need that. 
That's gonna be a little difficult to type on. Unit setup, Imperial versus metric, language. So that's basically just your whole settings menu. Tap to add alarm. So you can actually have alarms on this too. That's very nice. And it looks like there's one different clock face. So you've got the digital one we saw earlier. You can also change it to analog. And now when I go back home, this is what it looks like, which actually not bad, not bad at all. But this isn't intended to be a thorough review of this. I really just wanted to sort of take it out of the box, show you what it looks like, go through a couple of the features and settings on it. Not a bad little watch so far, although I have received a couple of emails since it was synced up and I have not seen them show up over here yet, but it does appear to be able to communicate very well with the phone. It's got alarms and music controls and camera controls. So for the price they have it for over on Amazon, it doesn't look like a terrible option. The leather in the strap is a little bit stiff, so it's gonna take some time to sort of break in but it does say it is genuine leather if you can see that. The heart rate monitor seems to be working pretty well. So if you're in the market for an inexpensive smartwatch, this one might not be a bad option. I'll put a link to where you can find it down in the video description. Thanks so much to the company for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Remember, leave a thumbs up below this video if you like this video. Let me know if you want to see more about this. There's not going to be a huge amount more to show, basically just talking about battery life and using it as a notifier and a smartwatch day to day, but I can definitely do that if you want to see it. Subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available though. We'll see you next time. A range of about 700 to more. Sounds interesting. The whole idea though is, is it's not going to be as pocketable as the RX100 series. That's what's sort of pulling me away from it. If they would put a mic